Hello. Welcome to another encouragement here at I'm Second Channel. My name is Brother. Because it doesn't matter who I am. The only one that matters, beloved, is Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus the Nazarene, hallelujah, Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, it means that, that Jesus is Messiah, he is Lord, let's pray and we're going to get right into it, and today we're going to be talking about the Lord's, his mercy, his readiness to forgive. First, you need to know, for those that don't know him and have a personal relationship with the Lord of glory, he wants to know you. He is not far off as you think. He sees and he knows. He knows the trouble you're in. He knows your past. He wants to give you forgiveness through his blood. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. Yes, the world of Israel, first of all, the world of his, his chosen people, the Hebrews, you know who you are. You're waking up all around the world. You're no longer lost. You know who you are. But he loves the Gentile and has made a way for even you to be saved. He's a God of mercy. He's ready to forgive. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He so loved that he gave his son's life that whosoever would believe on, rely on, trust in, leaning not to your own understanding, your own worldly smarts, but depending on his finished work of what he did when he hung on that tree and turning away from your wickedness he will save you confess your sins before him be honest do honest business before your God your creator he will save you you will be born again and he promises to give you the Ruach HaKadosh the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost Pray and we'll get right into it. Father, thank you so much. I feel your presence already. Bless your holy name. I pray that as many as here that don't know you, that even one would be saved, Father. It would be a great miracle for one to come to you to surrender, to no longer play church, Father but to give you his or her life, Lord. Your word says that the angels in heaven rejoice over one who comes to you. Bless your name, Father. Bless this reading of your word. We'll be so very careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, for it all belongs to you anyway. And it is in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of God, that we do pray and do say amen and amen in Psalms chapter, chapters 85 and 86 because they're kind of short. We're, we're again talking about His mercy, our Elohim's mercy and His readiness to forgive. The Bible says, The Bible says, the Bible says, Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. And in the last days, he promised to, to do that again. There are scriptures that are unfulfilled yet because 
Jacob, who is Israel, is spread all around the world. But he says in the last days, he's going to bring back the captivity of Jacob. He's going to bring all of his family, true Israel, home. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. This is what we want, beloved. Father, cover all of our sin. Wash it away in your precious blood. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from thy fierce anger. Turn us. This is what the scripture says. Turn us. O oh God of our salvation, and cause thine anger, uh, thy anger toward us to cease. Stop being mad with us, Father. Please, O oh God. Would thou be angry with us forever? In Deuteronomy 28, those that are, uh, are Israel went into slavery on ships because of the anger of God and because they rejected Jesus. No, we want Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? But see, there was a reason in, in, in the nation of Israel being scattered this one last time in the last days so that the Gentiles could come to him, those that love our Abba Yah, those that cling to the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You can now be saved and have been getting saved for 2,000 years, but now he is about to turn his attention back to his people. He has not forgotten you, Hebrews. He has not forgotten you, Israel. And he hasn't forgotten you who call on him also, Gentiles, out of a humble heart. He'll save anyone. Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. It's a cry in the spirit to save to save, to save, O oh Lord. I will, I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto us, unto his people and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. He will save you, but don't turn again to that life that he brought you out of when you got saved, believer. Don't turn again to that foolishness. You know, this weekend, my wife is uh, out of town for her job and having a chance to visit our family, some of our family. And don't you know that the enemy has been playing in my head to turn the folly while she is gone? I will not, with all this in me, bring shame to my father ever again. I'm asking him to keep me. Y'all pray for me. As I pray for you all, the family of God. But this is what the enemy wants. I said that for that reason. He wants us to turn back. He wants to, he always has a suggestion. Now you can, you can do anything you want. No. I can live for my God. I can live holy. I can walk in the fear and admiration of the Lord. I can give him my life for real. I can choose to have a relationship with him. I can seek his face this weekend. Surely it says his salvation is nigh to them that fear him. Surely his salvation is nigh means it's close, it's nearby to them that fear him, meaning them that have a respect for him. His salvation is near, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. 
righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Hallelujah. What beautiful poetic uh, scripture. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. He's talking about when he makes everything right again. Righteousness and peace going to kiss each other. Hallelujah. Mercy and truth going to meet again. They haven't been together in thousands of years. <laughs> truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good and our land shall yield her increase. See, the scriptures say when, when, when true Israel is back in the land, that land will be in peace. The world, it says, the scriptures, read your Bible. Excuse me. The world would be at peace. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his steps. Lord, set us in the way of your steps. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, and hear me, for I am poor and needy. I humble myself before you. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. I am in a right position with you. It doesn't mean that I'm perfect, but... I have been made perfect by faith in the finished work of Christ. So I stand holy and right. I am in right standing with my Elohim, with my Abba Yah. I pray that for you today. Preserve my soul. Oh my God, save thy servant that trusted in thee. Save us, Father, we're trusting in you. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all of them that call upon thee. He's ready to forgive. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications, to my prayers. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee for thou wilt answer me. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Among the gods, little g, there is none like unto thee, O Lord. Neither are there any works like unto thy works. Nobody was ever able to help me or to free me from those the drugs and the alcohol and the sleeping around and the running the streets and the not having peace and the being in the depression that I was in. None of the works of the little gods. <laughs> Neither are there any works like unto thy works. Your works have set me free, have taken the chains off of me. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. There is nobody like my Elohim. Nobody like our God. Trust him today. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name, to respect you. Teach me thy way. Teach us your ways, O Lord. And we will walk in your truth. Your truth. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. Do you realize that those that are saved have eternal life? Let me tell you how long that is. It's eternal. It's forever. Do you believe the scriptures? We will worship him forever as we realize that what he, everything he said was true. I told you this probably before too, that I, I told somebody that one day I'm, I'm going to wake up in glory, in heaven. Open my eyes and I'm going to be standing there saved, eternal life, new body. Standing before the king and then you're going to hear this Somebody sounding like a girl. Ah! Look over, it's me. Screaming like a little girl. <laughs> because his word came to pass. True. 
He is the way, the truth, and the life. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul and have not set thee before them. They, My enemies have not put your face before them. Rescue me, Father. Rescue my family, your family, Lord. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion, full of graciousness, full of long suffering, and plenteous in mercy and in truth. Listen to his character. He wants to save you today. He wants to rescue you. He wants to. He's ready to forgive. He's ready to have mercy on you. Oh, turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant. Strengthen us, Father, for these last days and, and let us be in position in your will to finish strong, Father. Show me a token for good that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed because thou, Lord, has helped me. Thou, Lord, has comforted me. I don't know who that's for today. This can be for anybody. I know we've all feeling the pressure of what's going on in this world. If, if anybody has a phone today and has internet, you can see the trouble that's coming on this world. You can see that there is racial tension. It's the enemy. You can see that the uh, just the all of nature is freaking out right now. That's God. He's moving. He is not pleased with this world. But the Bible says that. What does it say? That the righteous are not appointed unto wrath, and so His wrath is not for those that are in right standing with him. We need to cling to our Lord. Come out of playing church and really give him our hearts and our lives. He wants to save. He wants to rescue. He has to, he has to um, punish sin in this world because sin brings destruction. And he has to, to, to reckon what was done to his son and the rejection of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the son of God, the son of David. We can't bury our heads in the sand to that fact. But we can escape his wrath and have mercy. He's ready to forgive. I dare you to ask him. I dare you to get on your knees and humble yourself. Watch he save you to the uttermost and give you eternal life, beloved. Be blessed. Pray for me. Pray, pray for this ministry. As, 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 as we pray for you, as we pray for the family of God, and be united with one another. And don't let any of the mess that you see in the world come into and, and defile God's kingdom. Hallelujah. I don't care what goes on. Nothing that's going on today is to get to come in and defile the kingdom of God where, where Yeshua, Jesus, is the president. He is the king. Amen. He's ready to forgive. He's, he's, he's ready to show mercy. I'm second.